Hey everybody, it's Bolshi here, back with another Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous build video. Today, we're going to be looking at the Pyromancer. This is a spellcasting build that is a top tier damage dealer and crowd controller. It's a ton of fun to play, and it works with a variety of mythic paths. One of the biggest advantages of having a caster that specializes in ray attacks is that rays target touch AC. Many of the most difficult enemies in the game have impossibly high normal AC, so you need to be able to target their touch AC to really do any damage. And by the end of the game, this build has the potential to one-shot some of the game's hardest enemies in a single round. Alright, so let's jump right into the build. Now, I'm not going to do every single level, but I am going to show you how to build the first level because there are some important choices that you have to make here. Number one, we're going to be taking the Elemental Specialist Archetype of the Wizard. This is a pre prepared caster, which means that you have to choose which spells you're going to cast every day. And we want a prepared caster because this build is going to be dabbling heavily into meta magic. Pretty much towards the end of the game, every single spell you cast is going to have meta magic applied. And on a prepared caster, when you apply meta magic, the casting time for your spells stays one standard action. A spontaneous caster like the sorcerer, if you apply meta magic, it becomes a full round action. And we don't want that. We want to cast as many spells as possible, and we want to get them off quickly. The other main reason we're going with Elemental Specialist is because starting at level 1, you get to choose an element, and you can convert all of your Elemental Spell Damage to that chosen element. We're going to be going with Fire because there's a lot of gear in the game that will really amp up our Fire damage. Doing decent damage with the Spellcaster in Wrath of the Righteous is all about specializing in one element and allowing Ascenda Element, which is a mythic ability, to bypass all spell immunities and Elemental Damage resistance. Choosing Elemental Specialist as our archetype will allow us to take full advantage of Ascendant Element by converting all of our damage spells into an unresistible damage source, in this case, Fire. The one minor drawback is we have to choose one more Opposition School than we normally would with the Standard Wizard. For Race, we're going to go with Elf. Elf has the perfect racial abilities for this particular build. We get a bonus to Spell Resistance checks. We get bonuses to Dexterity and Intelligence, which are two most important stats. And for our background, we're going to be going Street Urchin Pickpocket. This is going to give us a bonus to Initiative and uh, Proficiency in Trickery and Stealth. Starting stats, we're going to max Intelligence all the way up to 20. We're going to take Dexterity up to 17, dump our Strength, and have 12 Constitution. Now, as a Spellcaster, really, you're all about your mental stat, in this case, Intelligence. So... Having 7 strength doesn't, pen, doesn't hurt us at all. For skills, you can choose whatever you want. I would stick with the, the knowledge skills. Trickery, stealth are good, and use magic device is very helpful. Our starting feats. Now, this eventually is going to be a damage-dealing spellcaster. But in the early game, we're just not going to have the spell slots. We're not going to have the class, the mythic abilities to make that viable. So we're going to start off by taking Spell Focus Conjuration, and we're going to focus on our early level CC. Our bonus wizard feat is also going to be Greater Spell Focus Conjuration. And our Arcane Bond, we're going to go with the Hair. Now with our pickpocket background and our Hair Familiar, that gives us a plus six bonus to initiative. We have high dexterity. In the early game, you really get to go first all the time because you have such a high initiative bonus. For our opposition schools, we're going to go with Necromancy, Enchantment, and Divination. You could also maybe throw in Abjuration in there. Uh, but I think these are the three best opposition schools because we're primarily going to be focused on evocation, conjuration, and also having some illusion spells in there like um, mirror image, uh, invisibility, greater invis. Those things are, are really helpful as well. And of course, our focused element is going to be fire. In the early levels, far and away, your best spell is going to be grease. So make sure you pick that up. Um, you always get every level because you're an evocation specialist. You get one bonus spell that you can cast from the evocation school. So you want to make sure that you pick up an evocation spell. We'll pick up Magic Missile and Burning Hands. Snowball is another really great spell. It benefits from, first of all, it bypasses spell resistance. It's a ranged touch attack. And if it hits, they have to make a, a fortitude saving throw or be staggered. So they could only take a move action or a standard action in a single round. This is very helpful in the early levels. But primarily you're going to be casting Grease. Vanish is helpful. But you have so few spell slots in the beginning of the game that really Grease takes most of them. Any deity works. Depending on which mythic path you go, any alignment works as well. 
Now, after we take our first level in Elemental Specialist, we're gonna take six total levels. Then we're gonna go into Eldritch Knight for 10, one level in War Master, Elemental Specialist, Cross-Blooded, and Elemental Specialist. Now I'm gonna break this down section by section. So in the beginning of the game, levels one through six, we're going all Elemental Specialist. Um, at level three is when we get our next selection. We're going to take Metamagic Selective. This is going to be huge. It allows us to throw down Grease and Pits and Glitter Dust without affecting our allies. This is going to be huge in the early game when we don't have the spell slots to really do damage. It's just not effective trying to do damage as a low-level sorcerer. You know, you'll blow a spell slot on Scorching Ray and do half the damage that, say, land could pump out every single round. It's just a waste of time. So Metamagic Selective allows us to um, put down these really great CC spells without causing trouble for your party. At third level, we get our second level spells. Uh, the spells I'm going to take would be Glitter Dust to start and Scorching Ray. You want to take one Evocation spell because you have the bonus slot. And then we can now also, with, with Selective Metamagic, we can bump up Grease to a second level spell by applying the Metamagic. At level four, we take a, a increase in our intelligence score. All of our increases, ex except the last one, are all going to be on intelligence. At level five, we're going to take martial weapons, martial weapons proficiency for our feet because that's a prerequisite to get into the Eldritch Knight prestige class. And at, with our bonus wizard feet, we're going to take spell penetration. At this level, we also get third level spells. So we're going to take fireball and actually haste. I would take fireball and haste here, but also... Um, we're going to slap on a selective metamagic to create pit, and that's a really deadly combo, having create pit and grease, both selective, so your party can fight on top of it, your enemies get dragged into the holes. Okay, let's take a look at some gameplay from this point in the game. Now, as I said, in the early game, casting your damage spells is just not worth it. It's just not efficient. So a well-placed Grease can really trivialize what would be a normally uh, really challenging encounter. Like here, you can see I drop a Grease before the enemy gets a chance to act. And because I have such high initiative, I actually get a Glitter Dust off as well. Now, that's probably overkill for this pack here. I just needed one Grease and you know my, my team could sweep up the rest. But it just goes to show um, how valuable those spells can be. And you can see this is a selective grease, so my, uh, my allies don't have to worry about walking over the top of it, and they can clean up the rest of this pack. And by the way, all of these um, recordings are done on either core or hard in the early game, and then everything else is going to be on unfair. And you can see that these saving throws, um, my DCs are, are so high that they really don't have much of a chance to save in the early game. We're looking at 18 and 19 difficulty class. Another great strategy is pre-casting Grease on a choke point, and if you really want to go overkill, you can toss a Selective Pit on top of that, like I'm doing here. This is the uh, Otherubo fight in Grey Garrison, which is normally pretty challenging on core and above, but you can see that these two spells almost entirely trivialize the encounter. So we drop the Grease, we drop the Pit, everybody falls in except for the boss, because he has the highest, um, the highest saves, and then the rest of my team pretty much can see makes really short work of him because they can focus on him and that's it moving on at level seven we take point blank shot and precise shot as a bonus combat feat at level eight you get a plus one to intelligence at level nine we pick up greater spell penetration at level 11 we pick up spell focus evocation and improved initiative as a bonus combat feat at level 12 we take another point in intelligence at level 13 we take up spell specialization and we choose hellfire ray for now until the end of the game and at level 15 you take skill focus knowledge arcana and improve critical ray as a bonus combat feat i'll go over spells in a separate section here now in the mid game this is where our damage ability starts to come online uh, we still do great cc with our conjuration spells but we get the option of doing damage with scorching ray we get Ascendant Element at Mythic Rank 3. We get items that start boosting our spell resistance checks. We start getting gear that really synergizes well with fire damage, including Malander's Insult, a Relic Item, and the Ring of Pyromania. I'll go over those in the, um, the gear section. Here you can see us doing, what is this, about 180 or so damage with one Scorching Ray. Not bad. So pretty, pretty respectable damage at this point, and also very reliable. The high attack bonus of the um, of the Eldritch Knight 
allows us to land these spells. Like here we landed, what is this? That's about 90, about 270 damage, or maybe 250 or so per ray, which is really not bad at all at this level. And in a single round with the swift action from our Draven's Hat, we almost one shot the uh, Darachne Devastator with a single round of damage. Land gets to take the credit though. Once we pick up Ascendant Element, we also have some really great AoE in the form of Fireball here. You can see me dropping a Fireball in this uh, ancient Treant fight, uh, blowing up the Mooks with a single shot, and then taking a significant chunk of the Treant's health with a Scorching Ray as well. At this point in the game, we also have Abundant Casting for first, second, and third level spell slots, so you've got a lot more room to let Fireballs fly and actually do some damage here. Now it didn't hurt that he was vulnerable to fire damage either, but you can see here I get the killing blow with the demonic charge ability, which is a really fun ability if you happen to go the demon mythic path. Uh, but this guy has 31 spell resistance, and at this point in the game, we have enough gear to make spell resistance checks relatively easily. So that's another big reason why our damage really kicks off at this point in the game. Moving on at level 16, we take our last level in Eldritch Knight. At level 17, we take a level in Lore Master, Meta Magic Bolster as our feat, and Combat Secret Improved Improved Critical Ray. At level 18, we take another level in Elemental Specialist. This gives us our 9th level spells. At level 19, now that we have 9th level spells, we dip around to get um, some more powerful abilities here. We take a level in Cross Blooded, and I take two of the Draconic Bloodlines that give me an increase to fire damage. I choose Weapon Focus Ray. You could also choose Meta Magic Heighten here. Uh, on second thought, that's what I went with. And then as a bonus Sorcerer Feat, Meta Magic Empower. And finally, level 20 is Elemental Specialist, and we inc improve our dexterity by one. So this is some in-game footage here. This is level 20, uh, Mythic Rank 9, all the gear, all the abilities and things. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention is that at level 10 of Eldritch Knight, your capstone ability is when you crit, you get to cast a swift action spell as if using the quicken meta magic. So every time we shoot a ray, if one of those rays crits, we get a free spell that round, which is pretty awesome. All right, take a look. All right, so here we go, a little combat demo here. Now this is late act five. This was a pretty challenging fight, and I believe this is on unfair. Let me just check real quick. Yep, it's on unfair. And uh, I'm gonna try and solo this thing, or at least do all the damage with my main uh, sorcerer character. So we're going to pop Demonic Rage, we're going to go ahead and teleport in here onto this guy. Now this is the surprise round, so I only get one action, but I think I'm actually going to go ahead and quicken something. I'm going to quicken a CC spell. How about a Mass Icy Prison here? Right here. And let's see, you can see that our DC is 51, which isn't bad, uh, but they also get a penalty to their reflex save. So let's see if I can land this. And there we go. We hit it on everybody. You see these saving throws. They also have to take the worst result. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not Mythic Rank 10 in this, in this clip here. So even the fact that they only get to roll once and this being on unfair, we still got just about everybody here. Now, one really cool interaction that you have <clears throat> as a Ray Blaster is if you have a Paladin to cast Mark of Justice, which gives you bonus damage equal to the Paladin level of the person that cast it. So I'll cast it here on this Baylor. That gets applied to every one of her Ray damage um, instances. So we'll see that in just a second here. Oh, I'm going to have to kill that thing. I think I'll kill them both. All right, so... <clears throat> this guy has Smite Evil on him, so I'm going to go ahead and cast a uh, Bolstered and Empowered Hellfire Ray, and you can see what I mean. Boom. All right. So that does a little bit more damage than it should, but at the same time, you can see that every single ray, and we have three of them, every single ray is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine instances of damage, and every one of those gets to add Seal's Paladin level, which in this case is 13. So that's a ton of extra damage. And with just one crit, we uh, we one-shot a Baylor on, on Unfair, so pretty nice. Let's see, that was my swift action, unfortunately. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this person here. Darn. Shall kill this one here. 
But that's the beauty about Demon is you get three spells per round if you if you get a crit and you get a swift action. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a why don't I do a, I'll do a selective Sirocco here. I'll do a heightened selective Sirocco on these. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the, the fight is pretty much over. I just need to kill these two and everybody else is CC'd permanently. But uh, I think you get the idea of just the, the power that this thing has when it reaches its max level. For our mythic path here, I'm gonna start off with the demon. There's really three mythic paths that work very well with this build, demon, Azada, and trickster. They all are kind of unique and they need to be built different ways. But anyway, starting with demon, I'll just go over the mythic feats and the abilities here, which are kind of the same for, for all the mythic paths. Number one, we want to get abundant casting. We definitely want to have more spell slots as soon as possible. Now, I made some mistakes on this, so I'll correct them as I go. At Mythic Rank 2, definitely take Spell Penetration. That should go here. Spell Penetration first if you're going Demon or Trickster. At Mythic Rank 3, we're going to choose Ascendant Element. So now that our fire spells will not be resisted and um, they'll pierce immunities. At Mythic Rank 4, we're going to take Expanded Arsenal Evocation. So all of those investments we've made into Spell Focus for Conjuration will now apply to our Evocation spells. At Mythic Rank 5, we're going to take Approved Abundant Casting. Mythic Rank 6, Spell Focus Mythic Conjuration. That will double the bonuses for Conjuration, and since we took Expanded Arsenal, it will also double them for um, Evocation as well. At Mythic Rank 7, we take Greater Abundant Casting. Now we have as many spell slots as we're really going to get in the game. At Mythic Rank 8, here I actually would take Improved Initiative. Take Improved Initiative here. That's more important than Criticals for Ray. You can take this at Mythic Rank 10. At Mythic Rank 9, I like Favorite Metamagic Bolstered because Bolstered in increases the spell level by 1. And if you take this, you can bolster everything without increasing the spell level. So this is very nice. At Mythic Rank 10, I went with Extra Mythic Ability, Favorite meta, meta Magic and Power, but you could also go with Improved Critical Ray here if you went with Improved Initiative at level 8. Of the Mythic Paths, I think that this build works really well with three of them, Demon, Azada, and Trickster. You could also do Azada into Devil, uh, but those three primarily. I'm going to start with Demon. Demon gives you a lot of really tremendous things. The Demonic Rage increases the DC of your spells, so unlike... Um, you know, regular Barbarian Rage, this improves your attack roll and your DCs. So it makes it more difficult for enemies to save against your spells. You also get Demonic Charge as a movement action, which is just really cool. You can, every single round outside of Demonic Rage and inside of Demonic Rage, you can teleport, which does damage to, a build, to enemies around you, and cast a spell, which is really nice. Um, some of the aspects, the first three that I have here are really amazing. Right now, this is this is glitched. The aspect of Brimaract, you know, from release has not been working. They say that in patch 1.2, this will be fixed. So hopefully in a, a month or so when that comes out, this will be fixed. But this is going to add an additional plus two points of damage per die rolled on all of your spells, which increases to three and four at uh, Mythic Rank 9. To put that in perspective, like this is such a huge increase to your damage. Um, getting plus four damage per die rolled with an empowered Hellfire Ray would be an extra 270 damage per Hellfire, per cast. So uh, that's tremendous, and the fact that this isn't working really um, is unfortunate. But uh, when it's fixed, the damage will really be improved. Aspect of Incubus increases your DCs by one. And Aspect of the Brock increases your uh, ranged attack bonus and also gives enemies a penalty to reflex save. So that's really good for us because we have all of our you know, big blasting spells have reflex saves and also your um, Mass Icy Prison, which is the best CC spell in the game. So towards the end of the game, you get to have three of these active and these are the three that I would choose. Um, at Mythic Rank 5, which is pretty early in the game, this is right at the beginning of Act 4, you get a major demonic aspect, and the one that we're going to be choosing is the aspect of the Colossus. This, first of all, just flat gives you an, a, an increase to your intelligence score, which is perfect for us because that's going to improve the DC of our spells. And also it allows us to cast spells as a movement action during Demonic Rage. So when Demonic Rage is active, and this is about the time where we hit level 16 or so, so at this point in the game, you get 
During Demonic Rage, you get to cast a standard action spell, a movement action spell, and if either of those crit, you get a swift action spell. So we're talking three spells per round. And I don't think there's really anything in the game that can um, match this kind of one-shot potential uh, casting three Hellfire, three empowered, maximized, bolstered Hellfire rays in a single round. Um, that's pretty much it, which is kind of cool because this is really one of those abilities that you would think you'd only get at like level 20, but you get this at level uh, Mythic Rank 5, which is, you know, about halfway through the game or so, maybe 60% through the game. Um, and then your next really cool ability is the, um, the, what are they called? The Demon Lord Aspects. And I like the aspect of Sakothmanoth, which makes enemies roll twice on their saving throws and take the worst result, which is basically like persistent meta magic. You get, get that on every one of your spells. So it, it makes our, our spells very difficult to save against. And also aspect of Nocticula, you can, as a free action during your rage, give one of your companions uh, all the benefits of your uh, demonic rage. So <clears throat> the demon, even though he, the positives for the demon you get tremendous burst and crowd control potential during your demonic rage. Being able to cast, you know, two or three spells per round and having insanely high difficulty classes is kind of unmatched for the other mythic paths. The downside is that this is a very limited ability. You only get, um, I think you get to use this um, like half of your mythic rank. So you'd only get to use it twice a day at mythic rank four, something like that. I can't remember exactly. I think towards the end of the game, you only get five uses. So it's very good. It's very bursty, but outside of demonic rage, it's a little bit weak. Also the demonic spell book is, is a little weak as well. Probably the strongest mythic path overall for this build would be Azada. Uh, it has a lot of synergy with the superpowers that the Azada has to offer. So one of the cool things that you get to do with Azada is take Life Bonding Friendship. Um, you kind of have a 50-foot aura around you where if your allies take, get taken down to zero health, they continue to fight until they've taken a number of hits equal to your Charisma modifier. Now, we don't have really high Charisma in this build, so that's not really the greatest thing about this. You also share all your teamwork feats, and you get to choose two teamwork feats um, at Mythic Ranks. Four and five. So at Mythic Rank 4, if you take Life Bonding Friendship and you choose Allied Spellcaster, it gives this feat to every one of your allies, and this stacks. So whenever you're adjacent to an ally who has this feat, you receive plus two bonus on concentration checks and level checks made to overcome spell resistance. So at this point in the game, all of your allies, all of your pets, all of your summons, they get this feat, and for every one of them, you get plus two to spell resistance. Basically, this is the only thing you ever need to, to never have to worry about spell resistance ever again, which is really nice, because if you've played a caster, um, losing spells to spell resistance is really frustrating. So it also free, it frees up two feats, and it also frees up a mythic feat as well. If you're going Azada, you don't need to take mythic spell penetration. Uh, the other two really great superpowers are Zippy Magic. This is gonna clone your single target spells. So every Hellfire ray you cast gets doubled and attacks, you know, you, every time you cast a Hellfire, it attacks two different enemies. Um, so essentially doubling your damage output. Also doubling your chance to get a crit and with the Eldritch Knight, get a free swift action. Uh, it works really well with Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning gets cloned as well. So this is a massive increase to your damage output. And then we also have Favorable Magic, which makes everything, um, every time you cast a spell that has a saving throw, the enemy has to roll twice and take the worst result. So it's very effective for landing your CC. Uh, also, Concentration Checks and Spell Resistance, you get to roll twice. So with Life Bonding Friendship and Favorable Magic, you never have to worry about Spell Resistance. Uh, Incredible Night Might is pretty nice for the extra attack bonus as well. You get plus one to attack and damage for every Mythic rank. Um... All in all, I'd say Azada is the strongest for uh, damage dealing um, because, it, you know, unlike the demon, you don't have to be in a special demonic rage to get the, the most out of your mythic path. The Trickster Mythic Path is a bit of a wild card, card here. Now, it can't really compete with the sustained damage of Azada or the uh, burst potential of the demon mythic path. But it's got some quirky things you can do. When you get uh, rank 4, if you take uh, Mythic Trick Perception rank 2, you can apply your Trickster improved critical feats to your rays, giving you a much higher individual crit chance. Um, and then at Mythic rank 7, if you take your Greater Mythic Trick, use Magic Device 3, you get an entirely new 
wizard spell book. So you basically double your number of spells that you can cast per day. And um, this spell book, unlike other mythic spell books, all of your spell focus feats apply to this. So it's just as good, actually better, than your regular wizard spell book because it's level 20, it's your character level, whereas we took a couple of dips, which decreased our caster level. So your Hellfire Rays that are cast from this spell book will actually be um, stronger than your 18th level wizard spell book. All right, so let's take a look at gear. Now, for the most part, your goal is to maximize intelligence, spell damage per die rolled if possible. There's very few items in the game that give you that, but if you find them, make sure you use those. And uh, caster level, that's pretty much it. So always gonna have an intelligence helm. This is the one you get at the end of the game, it gives you plus eight to your intelligence. We've got goggles of piercing gaze for an insight bonus to attack and damage. Cloak of Carnage, you can pick up in the Ivory Sanctum. This gives you an additional plus two to DC for all your evocation spells. This is important. The Ring of Pyromania is available early in the game in Act 3 from Arsenault, the vendor in Dresden. You want to pick this up as soon as possible. This is going to give you an additional 1d6 plus 5 damage to every fire spell, and that's for every ray you cast. So with a Scorching Ray with three rays, you get this bonus three times. And it also gives you a really nice plus two bonus to cast level checks to overcome spell resistance. So all good things here. Ring of Guiding Star for initiative. Bracers of Rough Landing, because I didn't run with a bard, so having a competence bonus to AC and attack and damage is really nice. And a lot of things in the game count as flying enemies. Basically anything you see that has wings. Valexia's Magnifying Amulet for more intelligence. You can see we have a pretty massive intelligence boost here. 52 intelligence is kind of hard to, to get with any other class. Honorable mention to this necklace here, the Aspect of the Asp. This is currently broken, I think. I, I don't see this, but this would give you an additional 1d6 plus 5 points of acid damage to all of your rays. I don't see that being applied, but this would really synergize well with the build. It's just currently not working. Deadly Rays is a Haramaki that gives you plus sight insight bonus, plus four insight bonus to ray attacks. Call of the Fiery Things, this is a relic item. You pick this up by doing the um, Titan Conspiracy quest in Act 4. You get an item that you can do a Crusade quest, and you get this amazing shirt. This gives you an additional 46 fire damage on every fire spell you cast. And again, this counts for every single one of our rays. So when you see me in the demos casting rays and getting like nine um, instances of damage per ray, this is why, because we've got our Ring of Pyromania, Call of Fiery Things, and then this belt, Malander's Insult. This is available early in the game, Act 3 again. Uh, I, can't, I think it's Malander's Crest. It's a uh, crusade item you pick up, and then you have to do a little uh, crusade quest, and you can get this item. It's really amazing. It's permanent. You just have to toggle it on. All of your spells, your fire spells, are going to do an additional 2d6 unholy damage. And again, this gets counted for every single one of our rays. Gloves of Arcane Eradication for more bonus to attack. Boots of Arcane Persistence. This is, these are available from vendors in um, the Flesh Markets in Act 4. Speaking of vendors, you always want to make sure you're checking out vendors for the metamagic rods. Having a good spellcaster is all about getting good metamagic rods. You want to make sure you get the Maximize and Power, Quicken, uh, and in Act 5 you can get the Grandmaster's Rod from the Bladesmith. Weapons during the game... Um, Probably start off with Purple Stone Knife for plus one DC to evocation. Later on in Act 4, you have to save the Halfling in a Leper's Smile, but when you do, in Act 4, you can pick up this staff. Flaming uh, Ashmaker, which gives you plus two to attack and caster level for your evocation school, so this is really important. Graybor's Quest in Act 5 gives you the Fiery Spellweaver, plus one to caster level, plus four to overcome spell resistance, all good stuff. And in Act 3, in the, I believe it is, the Ivory Sanctum, you can pick up the Quarterstaff of the War Mage, which gives you plus 2 DC, plus 4 to Spell Resistance, and some plus 5 to use magic. Very good weapons available, kind of spread out throughout the game here. That's one of the great things about this build, is that a lot of your end game gear you pick up relatively early in the game in Act 3. Act 3 is when your damage really comes online. We've got things like Cloak of Carnage, we get the Ring of Pyromania, we get this belt. Also, I forgot to mention this one. The Elemental Imbuement is a nice shirt that you can wear. If you take fire damage, this will give you an additional plus two 
damage per die, so you can hit yourself with a Molten Orb and really blast somebody with your next spell. This is a nice thing. Um, the Quarter Staff, the War Mage is available in Act 3. There's a ton of stuff in Act 3 that's available that makes this um, the damage aspect of this build really come online. All right, that's the build. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, it's been a long time since I've made a video, a lot of real life things going on, so I hope you all understand. Uh, actually, the only reason why I'm able to make this video right now is because I've got COVID, so I have to quarantine and I've got some time on my hands. Anyway, if you did like this, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.